Good morning, Church Alive. Good to have you with us today. You know, rain serves several purposes. Rain will provide what the plant life needs to grow. If you want to see plants die real fast, just stop watering them. And you know what? I think it's that way spiritually too. If we keep ourselves away from the rain of the Spirit, we're going to dry up. We need to allow for the rain to fall on us and keep us saturated and keep us to where we are alive. We call ourselves Church Alive. We might as well be. Amen. Why not be alive if you're going to church alive? Be alive in the Spirit and alive in His presence in your life. So we welcome you today, and those who are watching us on Facebook, we welcome you this morning and encourage you to just join in with us, worship the Lord there where you are, and allow God's rain to fall on you. Would you stand with me here this morning as we begin with Scripture? I was looking at this Scripture earlier. It's one of the shortest chapters of the Bible. It might be the shortest. I'm not real sure. I haven't researched that. But it's Psalms 134. And it says, Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord that made heaven and earth bless thee out of Zion. We want to bless the Lord today and honor Him as we uh, enter into a time of worship and just good fellowship today in the Spirit of the Lord. Would you join with me in prayer before the worship team takes over this morning? Father, we thank you for your goodness today. We thank you for this day. This is the day the Lord hath made. We don't get to choose the weather. We don't get to choose the events that happen in the day, but we do get to choose how we respond. And Lord, today we're going to respond with praise. We're going to respond with gratitude to God for giving us this day. We're going to praise the Lord from the depths of our heart. So Lord, we honor you today and give you glory in Jesus' name today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you're well.
We can take a minute here. Thank you, Lord. We got all day long. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just love on the Lord for a few minutes? Thank can we just thank Him? Can we just praise Him today? He September the 12th is a special day for us. David will be 58 years old tomorrow. He told us this week, he said, I didn't think I would make it to my next birthday. But you know what? He's not on a ventilator. He's not in the hospital. He's breathing on his own. He knows his name. He knows my name. He knows where he lives. He knows the word. Bless the Lord. And he knows Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What else do we need? Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. on January the 30th of this year I didn't have a clue what was going on Lord a brain tumor never crossed my mind but you did God you knew exactly where he was going to be at that moment in time God, all of the nuggets that we've prayed for, you've supplied every one of them. Every one of them. Thank you, Jesus. And God, I thank you. I praise you, Jesus. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, because you've never left our side. you, Lord, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light.
just a couple of days ago, the world saw the passing of the Queen of England. Queen Elizabeth II, age 96, reigning over the British Empire for 70 years, the longest reigning monarch in man's history not just of England, but of all of the world's history, except one. They forgot one, and he still reigns. He still reigns today, and he will reign tomorrow, and next week, and next year, and through all eternity. The King of kings and the Lord of lords will continue to reign. Does he reign in your heart today? Praise the Lord. I'm glad because I know Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And I think I'm more glad that he knows me. His word tells us I know your name. He knew me before I was ever formed in the, the belly of my mother. Before I was ever even thought of by my father, the Lord knew me. And I'm glad to know today that he knows my name. You can be seated. Beautiful worship. I remember hearing a story once of this saloon, I guess you could call it, a bar in New York City that they called Hell's Gate. And virtually everybody that, that liked to drink, if they ever went to New York, they wanted to go to Hell's Gate. And so there was one day this man was walking through New York. He'd never been there before. And he saw this fellow that looked like he was maybe a, a native. And he asked him, said, how do I get to Hell's Gate? And the man looked down the, in the distance and he saw a steeple. And there was a, a cross up on top of the steeple that was lit up. And he said, you just go past that cross and you'll find hell's gate. It's at the cross. That's where it begins. It didn't end there. That's just where it all began for us on this side of it. With our relationship with the one who nailed it, was nailed to that cross. But the cross couldn't keep him. The grave couldn't hold him. And he's still alive today and reigning in the hearts and lives of many of you that are here today and watching us. Does the Lord still reign in your life? If he does, rejoice in that. And know that your king will never die. King Charles has taken over. But if the Lord tarries, one day he's going to pass on from this life too. But our king will never pass away. He's always going to be there for us. Lord bless you today. We want to go before the Lord in prayer. So many needs today. We want to, of course, remember our pastor. He's having some good days and some not so good days but I have those and I don't have anything really physically wrong with me some of that's just age I'm not trying to make light of, of Pastor David's situation not in any way but there's going to be times when it's just not going to be real good for him but as Sister Luganda said, 
he still knows his king. He still knows his wife. He still knows his sisters. He still knows his calling. And he still believes in a miracle working God. Don't let your faith waver today by what you see or what you hear or even what you may feel. Live a life of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We, right now, we don't see the end result looking through natural eyes. But when we look through the eyes of faith, we can see God and see Him doing a work and see Him doing something great in Pastor David's life. So keep your faith eyes open. Don't let them get dim. Don't let them go bad on you. Put on your spiritual glasses if you need to. But keep your faith eyes open and allow God to touch you. So let's remember, Pastor, as we pray today. I have a sister, one sister left. I had three, two have passed on. But my sister Shirley, uh, she thought she was going blind, and I guess she probably was on the verge of it. But she used to have surgery sometime in the next uh, month or so on her eyes. They said the cataracts have just about completely closed her eyes up. So I desire your prayers for her, that God would touch her. She loves to be able to watch our Facebook stuff. <laughs> and she can't hardly see it. So uh, I want her to be able to see what God is doing in this place. She's unable to get out much on her own to, to go to church anywhere. So she watches us. And I'm so thankful that she can. So keep her in your prayer. Shirley is her name. And uh, that the Lord would touch her and help her get through this surgery with uh, very little, if any, complications. Are there other requests that you have this morning you'd like the church to help you pray about? I'm sorry. Sue, let's remember Sue today. You may have an unspoken request. You might just want to lift your hand. God sees that, Sister Sherry. Jackie, okay. God knows these needs today. Remember Mom today. Too. Yeah, Sister Webb. Let's remember her. I've known Brother and Sister Webb, I guess. 60 years at least. And they have always had a, a special relationship with my family. They've pastored my family at two different, in two different states. And so they've always had a very special place in my heart. And I, I love Brother and Sister Webb. So keep both of them in your prayers today that God would give them strength. Would you stand with me as we go before the Lord? I hope nobody misunderstands what I'm about to say. And I hope I don't hurt anybody's feelings. But if you don't believe that God can answer prayer, would you just sit back down? If you don't believe, there's no need in you praying. But I believe God today. I believe God still heals. God still performs miracles. God can deal with the small stuff, and He can deal with the big stuff. Well, you see, there's no difference in His eyes. He cares about you today. He cares about what you're facing in your life. There may be something going on that nobody else knows about but you, but God does. And he's there to help you 
if you'll just surrender it to him. Join with me in prayer this morning. Father, we come into your presence now. We thank you, God, for your love and mercy. I thank you, Lord, because I know that you answer prayer. I am an eyewitness to the hand of God moving in the lives of people. As I've witnessed in my lifetime, people who were going deaf have their hearing restored to them. People who were going blind, having their sight restored to them. People who were suffering from various types of diseases and ailments being healed by the hand of God. I've seen it, Lord. And I know that you are still the same God today that you were back then. You still deal in the affairs of man. You still care about the needs of your people. And Lord, we bring these requests before you today making our petitions known unto you. Not that we're informing you of anything that you don't already know, but we're laying them at your feet, Lord, and leaving them in your care and knowing that your grace is sufficient for each one. Touch Pastor David today, Lord, with a special healing that he hasn't felt yet through this whole situation. Let him feel something today that's a brand new feeling for him. Touch Sister Webb, Lord, today. Strengthen her in body and in mind today. Lord, let her feel your touch upon her life. And Brother Webb, I pray for Shirley today, Lord, for Jackie, for Sue. Touch these, Lord, today that need a special touch from you. Do the work, Lord, that only you can do. And you will be the only one that we give the praise and glory to. So to God be the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord. You may be seated. I'm we'll going to ask our ushers to come. Wait upon you for your offering today. Sister Diana had to remind me last week to take up the offering. I could have lost my license over that. Preacher, they don't take up an offering. So today we want to make sure we get this right. God is so good to us, isn't he? Has he blessed you? I'm not going to ask you to lift your hand if you don't have more today than you had 10 years ago. I don't want you raising your hand. We want to pray for you that you'll get more. But God has blessed us. And I'm so thankful for his blessings on my life. Pastor Doug, I'm going to ask the Lord's blessing on each one today as they give to you. Would you pray? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. a closer walk with Jesus. Praise the Lord. Before Sister Diana comes this morning, I want to sing one of her favorite songs. Go along with what she's been ministering to us last week and today. So worship the Lord with me this morning.
hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind and it's closer now than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call at the midnight cry we'll be going home when Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children the dead in Christ shall rise to meet him in the air and then those that remain At the midnight cry When Jesus comes again He's coming soon, folks Better get ready if you're not already I look around me I see prophecies fulfilling and signs of the time. They're appearing everywhere. I can almost hear the Father as he says, Son, go get your children. And at the midnight cry, the bride of Christ will rise when Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children. The dead in Christ shall rise to meet him. quickly changed at the midnight cry when Jesus comes again and then those that remain will be quickly changed the midnight cry when Jesus comes again at the midnight cry when Jesus comes again when Jesus comes again Praise the Lord, Sister Diana. Right before Sister Diane comes this morning, I uh, want to uh, remind you this next Sunday night, 6 o'clock, we have a Southern Gospel singing group called the Browders. I don't know if you're familiar with the Browders. They've had like 12 number one songs in Southern Gospel music 
in the last seven, eight years. I know this family personally. Uh, I have literally spent days in their home, three and four days at a time on three or four different occasions. Know them well, have had them for revivals. Uh, they sing, they preach, they write um, they write 90% of the songs that they record. Uh, a phenomenal, phenomenal group. If you don't know them, just YouTube them. They're at the National Quartet Convention just about every year singing on stage. Um, phenomenal group. Sister Lagonda, I, I know them well. I'm real good friends uh, with uh, Tommy Browder's oldest son. And just to tell you something real quickly about the group, Brother Tommy has been the father. He's got two sons, a uh, daughter-in-law. They all play. Uh, daughter-in-law plays keyboard. Sons play bass and guitar. And Brother Tommy plays guitar. Tommy Browder um, got polio in his 30s, was put in a wheelchair. He's been in a wheelchair for the last 15, 20 years. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal songwriter, guitar player, um, been in Southern Gospel for years, had two boys, Matt and, and um, David. I had them back when I pastored Mount Washington for the first time, probably around 1998, 1999. I, I've known them before, uh, known this family before his boys even got married. Now, both his boys are married. He's got four or five grandchildren. But phenomenal, phenomenal people. And they will not, they're as country as country can be. They're out of Kingsport, Tennessee. They not only will just come and sing. Uh, Matt, more than likely, is going to preach a little bit next Sunday night. And uh, they're going to sing. Uh, just, they are phenomenal people. They're not here to perform. They're here to flow with the Spirit of God. And I just want to encourage you. I know it's on a Sunday night. I know uh, a lot of our congregation, it's hard for you to get out uh, for an evening service. But if, if we got to get you a ride home, please get here next Sunday night. It is going to be a great service. We're trying to advertise this on radio. Uh, I'm calling everybody I know, trying to get them here. And, and um, uh, some pastoral friends and different ones. This is a phenomenal group. They're very hard to get, and they're very gifted, very anointed, and they will flow with the Spirit. To tell you uh, one last thing, we had them uh, for a revival when I was pastoring in Bartstown. had them for two different revivals. Um, but one revival in particular, we had them. Had a phenomenal meeting, averaged like 180 in attendance every service that week. Uh, got to the last night of the revival and had been a couple people saved during the meeting and one young man, he was a teenage boy wanted to be baptized in water and we filled up the baptistry to, to be for him to be baptized only individual being baptized that night in water and got in the service and the spirit of God began to flow and Matt's wife Sonia who plays keyboard uh, she'd only been baptized one time in her life as a child and she was at the keyboards and when it came time it was at the end of the service to be baptized in water the spirit of the Lord spoke to her and she spoke from the keyboard she said I just heard the spirit say get in the water and she said I I don't have a change of clothes, I don't have a towel, I don't have anything, but I'm going to obey God. And she went and got in the baptismal pool when I baptized her, and the Spirit of God fell in that place. We didn't get out till 11 o'clock that night. 36 people were baptized in water. Only one came with a change of clothes, only one came with a towel. We were scrambling, going to neighbors' houses just to get towels so people could dry, dry off. I was baptizing men and women in their jewelry and all. It was, it was one of the most incredible services I've ever participated in my life. 
just a phenomenal meeting. But that's the type of people they are. They just love the Lord. Country as country can be. Uh, as loving as any family you'll ever meet. And I grew up on Southern Gospel music. I grew up, uh, my mama and my father, that's all they had around the house. From the Inspirations, to the Kingsmen, to the Happy Goodmans, to, to the Hensons, to, to, to the Oak Ridge Boys. Uh, uh, anybody that sung Southern Gospel music, they, they I, I grew up on Southern Gospel music. And, and this group, uh, they, they do a lot of Southern Gospel, but they'll also do some contemporary modern worship. And uh, my little boy's got a song he loves called Waymaker, and uh, they do that song, and, and I'm going to try and get them to do it next week. But phenomenal, phenomenal people. So I just want to challenge you. They're not easy to get. We, Laganda asked me, Sister Laganda asked me if I could get them. I called Matt. He said, man, he said, you're not going to believe this. He said, I'm supposed to be in western Kentucky on Saturday night, the 17th. I'm going to be in Dayton, or, or Sunday morning, the 18th, I'm supposed to be in Dayton, Ohio, uh, Monday night. And we had nowhere booked for Sunday night. And he said, we, we're, we're coming right your way, heading north. And he said, if you can schedule us for a Sunday night, he said, otherwise we are booked out for the year and booked well into next year. So we know this is short notice. Uh, they do this full time. They don't work jobs. They do full time ministry, uh, full time. And not just singing engagements, they are preaching a ton of revivals a year. And so I just want to encourage you, come out, invite people, you know people that love Southern Gospel music, get them here. It's going to be live music, uh, and, and you're going to be blessed. I promise you, you will be blessed. It's going to be a phenomenal service next Sunday night. Sister Diana, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next Sunday night, it's going to be a, a great blessing. God, what, what everything Pastor Doug talked about, God, do it again. <laughs> do it again, God. We're ready for a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, it's, it's great to be with you today. And um, lots is going on in the world. And I'm just so glad that we can all get together again as a church, that we're not cooped up in our homes, that we can get out and come together and fellowship and worship God. And there's just something about coming together in the house of the Lord. It's, it's another level than trying to watch it at home on Facebook. We thank God for that ministry, and we understand that's the only way some people can get the word of God. And we pray God will bless them mightily, but it's good for us who are here together in the house of the Lord. And uh, we just want to say one more time, if you're listening, Pastor David, happy birthday. Happy birthday. I hope you can hear people clapping. <laughs> we hope you have a phenomenal birthday and a phenomenal year. And, okay, I'm going to get on with the word of God. And Jesus is coming. He's coming, he's coming. We're just sojourners in a foreign land. We're citizens of another country. We're not satisfied here because this isn't our home. Our home's on the other side. It's waiting for us. Boy, that home is really something. First of all, Jesus is there. That's the best part. Jesus and, and the Father and the presence of the Lord and all of our loved ones who have gone on before us and friends. It's going to be here soon, folks. It's not going to be long, and we're looking forward to that day. Uh, when I was uh, raised, I was raised as a Catholic, and uh, in my freshman year, I went to a, uh, a girls' Christian Catholic school, and I remember something a nun said to me. I never forgot it. 
She said, the time you live on earth, it's only a dot, it's only a speck compared to eternity. This, this earth, this, this, this life goes by so quickly. So make sure that you spend your life here well because how you live here won't only uh, decide where you will go for eternity, but what your rewards will, what will be, what your place will be in eternity. She said, uh, your life is, see my Bible here, there's uh, lots of pages in my Bible, but your life isn't even like one page compared to the rest of this Bible to eternity. So, so make it count well. Amen. Father, I thank you for blessing the word today. Father, I thank you for the anointing that breaks the yoke. I come against every power of darkness that would try to hinder this meeting in any way. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I command the God of this world to loose our minds and to let us go, that we won't be distracted. Father, I thank you for just blessing your word and blessing the people. Father, you know what everybody's need is. You know what they need more than anything. I pray that their needs will be met today according to your riches and glory. Father, I pray we'll all be refilled with your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, we, we will be just saturated with your presence, that we will be empowered, we will be emboldened, Lord God, by you to go out and make the rest of our days count for you to the best of our ability. And God, we praise you and thank you and give you the glory. Well, we're talking last week and we're talking this week on spiritual warfare during the end times. And it's not a subject we love to talk about, but it's a necessary subject to talk about. And uh, even though we're exposing the enemy and talking about the enemy some, we keep our focus on Jesus. Uh, all of our focus is on him because he's all powerful and he's the conqueror and he's a mighty God. I, I want to read this scripture here as I open, out, open up. I usually read from New King James. I uh, opened up on this this morning from Deuteronomy chapter 20, uh, verse 1. I'm going to read a few scriptures here. When you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God is with you who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. So it shall be when you are on the verge of battle that the priest shall approach and speak to the people. And he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. Do not let your heart faint. Do not let your heart be afraid. And do not tremble or be terrified because of them. But the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. We, while we are on this earth, the truth of the matter is we're in a battle. We're not here to have a good time. I'm glad when we can have some good times, but that's not our main reason to be here. We're, we are in a foreign land, and it's a battle for the souls of men and women. And while we're here and uh, equipped by the Holy Spirit, God has called us to be a bright and shining light for him, that we're not to be afraid of the enemy and Satan and his devices, but uh, we know who we are in Christ, and we are going to continue to be bold for him and lift the cross up high and win as many people to Jesus as we can. I don't believe the church will be here much longer. I believe the rapture can happen any second. I believe we don't have much time. And we're not just sitting here twiddling our thumbs, trying to hang on by a thread until the trumpet sounds. Uh-uh. We're here because we know who we are in Christ. We don't care how old we are. We don't care what's going on. We know that we have a mission. We have a call. Jesus said that we should go out and to win souls, to disciple souls. So while we're here, we're going to do as much for God as we can do for God. We are going to have faith in God. We're going to make our self count, and we are going to war against the enemy. We don't like to do that, but that is part of our assignment from the Lord, um, as we talked about quite a bit last week. Um, we do keep our focus on Jesus, even though we're exposing the enemy. Philippians 2, I'd like to read verses 9 through 11. 
God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord, those in heaven and those on earth and those who are under the earth. Those who are under the earth are demons that are in the abyss and those who are under the earth are people who have died, who were lost and they're waiting in hell for the judgment day. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus is Lord over us. He's Lord over me. He's Lord over you. He's Lord over everything. Colossians 2.15 says, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. They thought they had killed the Son of God, but he actually defeated them on the cross. When he hung on the cross, he defeated them. Uh, James 4, 7 says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Uh, we talked about last week, there's many kinds of prayer. There's praise and worship prayer. There's prayers of thanksgiving. There's prayers of supplication. There's prayers of petition. There's, there's all kinds of prayers, intercessory prayers, pleading prayers, desperate prayers, uh, personal prayers. Spiritual warfare is a whole new ball game. Spiritual warfare is where we uh, engage the enemy. Spiritual warfare is when uh, we put our armor on and we sharpen up our sword, the word of God, and we do business with the devil. How dare you come against my children? How dare you come against my family? How dare you come against me? How dare you try to hinder me and what I have to do for God? You will not intimidate me. You will not make me afraid. You will not kill me. I will go when God says I'm going to go. And the way that God says I will go, you're not going to be the one to take me out. You are not going to stop me. You are not going to cause me to hide. You are not going to cause me to worry. You are not going to cause me to be anxious. I am not going to fret. I am not going to cry and worry and wring my hands. I'm going to stand up on my feet. I am going to praise the Lord. I am in God's army. My sword is anointed by the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to fight you, and I'm going to cut your head off, and I'm going to throw it to the birds to Pick out your eyes, like we said last week. I belong to God. I'm God's property. I'm washed in the blood. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm full of the Word of God. I'm a king's kid. I'm in the Lord's army, and I'm coming after you. You won't have anything God promised me, and I'm going after souls. And every time you come against me, I'm going to come against you seven times more in the name of Jesus because I know who I am. I am in Christ Jesus. Amen. I am a servant of the Lord. I am a servant of the Lord. The devil's uh, 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 demons are servants of the devil, but we are servants of the Most High God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the servants of Satan just to expose the enemy. We can't. We can't um, not fight. We have to fight. We can't lay down. I want to stress that. Some of us have not been fighting in the spirit like we have the weapons to do and like God would have us to do. And, and God wants to encourage us and, and to understand our authority in Christ and to have confidence in him. All right. I am going to, I think, go now to... Um, Revelation chapter 9. Today is a 9-1-1. We're remembering 9-1-1, what happened 21 years ago when the trade towers were destroyed. And I've often thought it's no coincidence uh, who we see mentioned in Revelation 9-1-1. But first, let's read Revelation um, 9, 1 through 10. Then the fifth angel sounded. Now this takes place. It's the fifth trumpet. It's probably right before the middle of tribulation, right around there. It's the fifth trumpet. It's the first woe. The judgments of God during the tribulation are getting stronger and stronger. And then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. 
And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Now we read in the book of Revelation in chapter 7 that there's 144,000 Jewish men who will be born again and they will follow the lamb wherever he goes and that God puts a mark on their forehead to set them apart so that the judgments that are being poured out on the world cannot touch them. So the ones who have a mark on their forehead are the, the saved Jews during the tribulation period. We also read in Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, that there is a special seal put on the foreheads of people who intercede, people who pray for other people, people who pray for their country, people who pray for the land, people who pray for souls to be saved. So there's obviously a, a seal put on the forehead uh, born again Jews, and I am sure Christian people who are born again during the tribulation. Now, we believe that the rapture, it, we believe the rapture is before the tribulation, and the church will go up to be with the Lord. But even so, many people will come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior during the tribulation. They are not the church, but they are saved people, they are Christian people who are saved during the tribulation. So the people who have a mark on their forehead are the people who are saved Jews and people who are saved Gentiles. In verse 5, And they were, <clears throat> were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle, and their heads were crowns with something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. These are special demons, wicked, terrible demons that have been reserved in the abyss of hell until this time. They are horrendous creatures, uh, able to inflict unbelievable torment and pain on people. Verse 9, and they had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. And they had tails like scorpions, and there were st stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Now... In verse 11, I know that the Bible wasn't divided into chapters and verses until the late 1500s. Before then, it all just ran together until somebody separated it all into chapters and verses. But here it's, it is interesting to me that in Revelation 9:11 it says, And they had a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek, he has the name Apollyon. One woe is past. Behold, still more woes are coming after these things. Now, I know we're not in tribulation yet, but we're sure seeing tra uh, shadows of tribulation. Demon powers are at work, and I believe every day more demon powers are being loosed on this world. Demons are, like I said, in the abyss. And there are demons all about this earth roaming around, servants of uh, Satan. And there are many demons in the atmosphere, in the second heaven. You know, the Bible says that Satan is the prince and the power of the air. So we're dealing with demons in the atmosphere. We're dealing with demons on the earth. And there's demons under the earth that are being loosed continually out of the abyss because the powers of wickedness will increase more and more in the last days. 
Like we said last week, there's preachers preaching that we're going to get this world perfect or really good, and then Jesus will come back. It's just not scriptural. Would to be it were that way, but the Bible's clear. Uh, people have rejected the gospel. They have rejected Jesus for the most part. This world is growing more and more wicked. It isn't getting better. But bless God, he has a remnant. God always has a remnant. We're privileged to be the end-time remnant, created for this time and this hour, to do exploits for God. It's not an easy time to be here, but God thought we could handle it, Pastor Doug. God thought we could handle it, Pastor Kenny. He knew we could handle it. He put us here for this time and for this season. So we know that the king of hell, his name means destroyer. And it was the destroyer that was behind what happened to the trade towers. It was the destroyer and is the destroyer who is behind everything bad that happens in the world today or tries to happen in your life. So this is who we're up against. Now, these demons operate in other places too. They're operating on the earth and through many of the places that, that are obvious. They're, they're operating in the educational system in our universities and colleges, twisting the minds of our young people, corrupting their minds. Many of them go in these colleges and universities today and come out not believing in Christ with, with a mindset for the one world government. And, and they're just twisted in their thinking you have young people in the educational system, you better know spiritual warfare. You better know how to claim the power of the blood over your children and your grandchildren. You better know how to engage the enemy and not only handle the spiritual warfare part, but do what you can to influence them for Christ. These, these demonic spirits are certainly in the political system. They're in our government. They're in every phase of our life. They're in the media for sure. They're corrupting the minds and the hearts and the spirits of people through the, what they watch on the internet. internet. There are many Christians who are sitting in their homes. They're, they're pulling up things on YouTube and other places, and they're entertaining devils is what they're doing. They think that, that nobody knows what they're seeing and nobody knows what they're doing. Uh, we know pastor. We know a pastor who is over many of the churches in a certain state. I won't name. He's over over uh, sixty something churches in another state. He says the main problem with uh, charismatic, spirit-filled pastors that they oversee is pornography. Pornography has uh, infected the churches. Demons are at work in the churches. And if we do not stay focused and we don't stay close to God and we are not careful, they will slip in through a window through, from the Internet, from some other source, from the media, from what they watch on TV, what they listen to, what they entertain. And first thing you know, there's demons and devils living in your house. And I, th there's been times the Lord has reminded me, you be careful you don't entertain demons in your house. You be careful you keep every door shut. Yes, you're a spirit-filled Christian and you know the word, but if you don't guard your home, if you don't guard your home and your house, they're just looking for a window to get in and corrupt and defile you. And you don't want to mess with that. You don't want to entertain with that because when, once they get in, it goes past the entertainment stage and they will begin to afflict you and torment you and do all kinds of things to you to try to destroy you because the name of their leader is destroyer. John 10.10 10 says a thief comes to rob, to kill, destroy, but Jesus came to give us life and to give it to us abundantly. The Satan is a destroyer. Uh, about uh, demons being in the church, people say, how can that happen? Well, just look at Revelation chapter 2, verses 18 through 23. Jesus rebuked the church of Thyatira. Uh, I'm looking at Pastor Sadler because he really knows the book of Revelation, and I better get it right or he's going to get me. 
But Jesus re rebuked the church of <laughs> he rebuked the church of Thyatira. And he says, "You allow that woman Jezebel in your church? You allow her? She's a false prophetess. She teaches people that it's all right to commit immorality. I've given her space to repent. She has not repented. If she will not repent, I'm going to throw her and her children in a sick bed, and they're going to die. Her children are the people who are, are her disciples." Not necessarily her physical children that the church had let uh, a, a demon-possessed woman who knew church talk who knew knew how to handle herself in church ways and the people were impressed by her prophecies impressed by what seemed like the Spirit of God moving in her she must have taught cheap grace because the cheap grace message says that if you are born again if you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior you're you're uh, you're going to heaven no matter what you do. You're going to heaven no matter what. That's false. That's heresy. That's a lie out of the pit of hell. You cannot live any way you want to live and think because you said the sinner's prayer one time that you're going to go to heaven. I believe if you've truly been born again, if you truly know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you're tr truly committed to him, you're not going to want to do those things anyway. But but they were deceived by this woman because they were all into, uh, we had to be careful. We want the Holy Spirit to move. We want the gifts to be operating in the church. We, we want to all get a word, and, and, and we love it when, when the gifts are being used. But there are people who pervert the gifts. There are people who use the gifts. The gifts can be used wrongly. The, the gifts can be used by the devil. So we have to know the word, and we have to have discernment in these last days. But this false teacher, this woman came in, and they, they bought her line, and they liked her message because it was a feel-good message. But, but Jesus said, you better get her out or, or there's going to be a heavy price to pay. God, I, I don't believe that's going on in this church at all, but I believe there's a lot of churches where it's going on. I pray that there, uh, Galatians says that there's another gospel that will be preached in the last days, another gospel, and it's being preached in many churches today, and we have to be careful. We have to know the Word of God and stay filled with the Holy Spirit. If a demon tries to get in your house, you take authority over it in the name of Jesus. If a demon comes into your family, don't just sit there and whine and cry and moan and the blues over it. Check your house. Get anything out of your house that would dishonor God. Check your heart. Check your spirit. Repent of anything you might need to repent of. Get your life right. Then you stand up against the enemy and say, I strike the blood of Jesus over my doorpost. I strike the blood of Jesus on the lentils of my house. I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. My house belongs to God. You're a trespasser. Get out of my house. You can't be in my house. My house belongs to God. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, the name above every name, and kick the thing out of your house. <laughs> Glory to God. Put on your praise and worship music and glorify God. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God. I am a believer in Christ. I am more than a conqueror in Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jude 3, 4 says, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, that the church, there's only one hope for the United States to have a little longer and more people to be saved not necessarily to be rich and prosperous and the strongest nation in the world, but to be a Christian nation. And is that the church, not talking about the unsaved, the church, that the people in the church will repent and get right with God and that they'll be filled with the Holy Spirit of the living God and they will be bold and courageous like the disciples were. 
the, the disciples were, were scaredy cats before they had the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They were afraid for anyone to know they were followers in Christ. They might be persecuted. They might have trouble for it. But once they were baptized in the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, they didn't care who heard them. They didn't care what they might have to go through. They didn't care what they might have to face. They loved Jesus with all of their hearts. And when they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, they were bold witnesses. They turned the whole cities upside down. They spread the gospel all over the world that they knew at that time. That's how we have to be today. I read there's a, a, a pastor who's written a book, and his name is uh, Bert Farias, and he said, there is a place in God where Satan dare not stay. It is divine power. He will not stay there. In Mark, the first chapter, verses 23 to 24, we read about how Jesus went to the synagogue. He went to the synagogue, a place of worship, uh, uh, the holy place where people went to, to hear, the, hear the word of God and worship God. And it says there was a man there, and he was possessed by the devil. Now, until Jesus came, he did not manifest. He was in, the, in a synagogue, we'll say the church. He was in a synagogue. Uh, the demons did not manifest, even though worship was going on. They didn't manifest. It says they didn't, they didn't manifest until Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit came on the scene. It's, he said, notice that the demon-possessed man in the synagogue did not cry out with a loud voice until Jesus got there. Those people sang their songs, said their prayers, read their scriptures, and the devil enjoyed it all. But when the power of God came on the scene, suddenly the devil became upset. Are you full of the Holy Ghost? Are you full of the power of God? Do you know who you are in Christ? Do I sound bold for a woman? I tell you, we're fighting a devil who doesn't respect timidity. I tell you, we're fighting a devil who doesn't respect the weak. I'm telling you, we're fighting a devil who, if he sees any cowardice or lethargy or doubt and unbelief in you, he'll walk all over you. He says, why? Because religious ceremony is no threat to him. We can hold regular church services and demon can sit right through it undisturbed. But when the glory and power of God is manifested and the spirit of God is moving and divine love reigns, the devil can't st stand it. It's, the, it's time for the church to come, for hell to be shaken, and the glorious church to awaken to divine power and love. Hallelujah. Um, so we are reading that we have to be careful in our homes. We have to be careful in our church. We have to, to get right with God and stay right with God to engage the enemy. I want to mention a few end time signs that show us we're very close to the end. I mention them almost every time I minister because that's what I'm called to do. Uh, it's already been mentioned about Queen Elizabeth dying and about King Charles taking her place. I see this as another chess piece on the end time board uh, being moved. We are pretty sure Queen Elizabeth was a nice Christian lady, as far as we can tell. She, she was always quick to mention Jesus. I heard her do it myself many times. But I don't know for sure, but I have read quite a bit about King Charles, that he's of the one world order persuasion. He's of the... Uh, globalist persuasion. He is, is very tight with the globalists, the one world order people. He's very tight with Islam. He has many Islamic friends. He is not like his mother. And I believe this is a tr strategic move in, in the end time scenario that, that England won't be, United Kingdom, um, Britain won't be like it was before. Things are going to begin to change. Uh, I understand Britain is very backslidden. They have a remnant just like we have a remnant who are crying out to God, but it's going to be different, and it's going to go more toward the new world order than ever before because that time is getting ready to come upon us. In Europe, the revived Roman Empire, that is a strategic player in the end times. They're, as you know, their gas is being cut off. Uh, their gas supply is being cut off from Russia. And, and, and they are very desperate to get whatever help they need. 
and uh, they will get help, but not necessarily from the right place because we read what the, uh, Europe, the revived Roman Empire, we read who they are going to produce in the last days. They are going to, to spawn the Antichrist in the last days. But Europe is in trouble, and uh, desperate people do desperate things. In North Korea this week declared themselves to officially be a nuclear state. They are nuclear, and they are dangerous. Uh, Iran, as you know, again, uh, they can produce a nuclear weapon within a week. The, the situation in the uh, earth is, is pretty dire if you don't know the word of God. If you know the word of God and you're a Christian, you're excited because you know these uh, end-time events are being fulfilled, and the rapture really will happen any second. We're very close to the end. The Middle East is a powder keg. Israel's uh, enemies are surrounding her from every front, getting ready to uh, attack her first chance they get. Of course, they won't su succeed. God will stand for them. Turkey just said this week that it's tired of trying to buy F-13s from the United States. It's going to negotiate with Russia. And, of course, that's another end-time prophecy being fulfilled as it will be Russia, Turkey, and Iran and their allies who will form a major coalition against Israel. And about the United States, is uh, the last thing I will mention, the United States, uh, the government is appointing people into the government. Some of them are full-blown Satanists, full-blown homosexuals, full-blown uh, people who are anti-Christ, globalist uh, from other c countries with other agendas. Our country has opened the door for all of these evil um, people to come into our very government. Um, I saw a picture of someone who was appointed just in the last few weeks to help um, stand against, uh, expose this monkeypox thing. I saw a picture of him with his lover dressed up like a dog, and I'm not going to tell you anything else. That's the kind of people that we have in many places in our government. Why do I say all this? I say all this because we can't hide from it because we don't like to read it and we don't like to hear it. We have to, if, if, if I saw a snake get in my house, I wouldn't just let it go where it wanted to go and act like it wasn't there because I don't like snakes. It did happen to us one time. We have to do what we have to do to get rid of that snake immediately because if we don't, it will do, might really hurt somebody. If we saw a thief or a robber come into our house, we would do what we have to do to get rid of that thief or robber. And that's what we have to do, church. We have to do what we have to do to, to ward off the enemy who's trying to get in our house, our home, our marriage, our children's lives. I know so many people, good Christian people, who have not stood up to their children and guarded their children, and now their children are on drugs. They don't believe in God. They're in immoral lifestyles. And sometimes you do everything you can do, and they're still going to do that. But we have to stand against evil any way that we can. In, in our country, we're going to have to pray like we've never prayed before. I cannot go up to the Capitol building you cannot go up to the White House. You cannot go into the Oval Office. You cannot go into the Executive Office. You can't get near the government. But bless God, you get down on your knees, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can go right into the Oval Office. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you can go right into the Executive Branch. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you can go right into the Supreme Court. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you can go right into the Congress and, and the Senate and, and the House of Representatives it is. 
By the power of the Holy Spirit, you can go into the universities and colleges. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you can go into all of these places that have been corrupted. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we can clean out the church. By the power of the Holy Spirit and the blood of the Lamb and the name of Jesus, we can do mighty warfare in the Spirit. God, God is calling us. God is calling us. This isn't a message people want to hear, but we have to hear it. We have to begin to pray earnestly, fervently uh, over all of these matters. Get our lives in order. Get our families in order. Uh, uh, get the blood surrounding our home to protect us and, and stand against the walls of the enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? In Deuteronomy 28, there's a lot of blessings and curses listed. There's blessings for our country. It's talking about Israel, but it can sure apply to any country. And um, it says the blessings are wonderful, you know, that God will bless you with if you serve the Lord. But it says if you don't serve the Lord, here's what you're opened up to. Now listen to this, what a country's opened up to if they don't serve the Lord. It says, aliens among you will grow stronger and stronger, and you will grow weaker and weaker. Aliens will come into your country and take over. It says, your sons and your daughters will go into captivity. Our sons and our daughters will go into captivity to the walls of the devil if, if our country is turning from God. It says, the plague will cling to you. The plague, does that ring any bells? It will cling to you, and you won't be able to get rid of it. If you're somebody who has rejected God and his word and his ways, if your country's rejected God, our country told God to get out, and these things are happening to our country. It says the country will be defeated by its enemies. It says madness, blindness, confusion, and Everything that would torment a mind will come into the country. I have never known so many people who are going crazy. They're losing their minds. They, they don't have room for them in the mental institutions. They try to help them on, for, in an online program. People are going crazy out of their minds. And this is a curse that comes on a nation that rejects God. It says, the Lord will bring a faraway nation against you with a fierce countenance, and they will destroy you. That's what the word of God says. Well, we don't want our country to be destroyed while we're here. While the church is here, we're going to pray and stand for God and fight the enemy and do all we can to lift up Jesus Christ and see our families, our homes, our churches, and our country blessed because we're the people of God. We know that during the tribulation, it's going to come down. But while the church is still here, we're going to give it our best shot, aren't we? We're not going to be defeated, but we're going to take our place in the Lord's army. We're all very familiar with uh, 2 Chronicles 7, 14 of my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. I will hear from heaven and heal their land talking about Israel, but it applies to us too. And now I want to uh, close by reading a passage from Joel chapter 2. And I would like to, um, if, if you feel like it, while I read this passage of Scripture and I'm concluding, if you feel like it, I would like for you to stand on your feet as I read this word from God, if you will. Joel chapter 2, beginning with verse 12. Now, therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all of your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Who knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering, blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, cause solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, 
Gather the children and nursing babes. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her dressing room. Let the priest who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not give your heritage to reproach that the nations should rule over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Hallelujah. And while you're still standing, please close your eyes a minute. Uh, just because we won't be distracted. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the power of your word. I thank you that you are the hope of your people. I thank you that you'll never forsake your people. I thank you for the precious blood that was shed on the cross to redeem us. The precious blood that washes away our sins and makes us white in your sight. I thank you for your love, your unconditional love. I, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that your love is being poured out now. You don't want anybody lost. You don't want anybody to miss eternity. You don't want anybody to go through these things. You're sending out a voice now saying, come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I thank you, Lord, that your arms of mercy are stretched out wide, that there's no sin so bad that you cannot forgive it. Lord, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you that today, Lord God, that your spirit is going out in the church and across the world saying now is the time today is the day of salvation today is the day to be uh, have your name written in the land's book of life today is the day to be set free from curses and and, and the and the devil's rights to attack you today is the day to be set free by the power of the lord thank you jesus if, if if there's anybody here if there's anybody listening through facebook this is a cry not from me it's a cry from the spirit of the lord come to me come to me come to me come to me my yoke is easy my burden is light i only want to forgive you i only want to cleanse you of your sins i only want to give you eternal life if you are not following jesus today if you are not born again by the blood of jesus uh, his arms are open out wide to you today to accept jesus christ as lord if that's anybody in this house today oh thank god you're here today thank god he loved you so much he doesn't want you to be lost he wants you to be saved we want to pray with you before you leave but now everybody pray with me say lord jesus i love you with all my heart i'm sorry for my sins I'm sorry for the times I've failed and all the times I've grieved your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the cleansing of your blood. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for healing me, rescuing me, giving me power over the enemy that I don't have to be defeated. You have made me more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. And as we close today, I, I would be so grateful if all of those of you who feel led to would come up here to the front and let us say a prayer for the United States of America. Our America is, is remembering a great tragedy today. We don't want that to happen again. We want to, while we're here, we're going to pray for the United States of America. And if you have a need, if you have a personal uh, prayer request, we're going to pray for that too. But wouldn't it be awful if we as a church got together and didn't pray for salvation and didn't pray for our country? Wouldn't that be awful not to take advantage of our power in the name of Jesus, not to intercede for our, the United States of America? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all just gather up here together.